Hello everyone and welcome to a new short episode from the Speculative Wildlife Research Center where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we are finally taking a look at the amazing mascot from the Pokemon series, the one and only Homer Chew. Yes, today is our April Fool's episode. Sorry. Homer Chu is an internet meme born from, according to my research, bootleg merchandising. I will keep this one short since you must be mad enough already about having to wait so long for Homer Chu. So here we go. Also, if you don't hate me after this video, please consider supporting the channel on Ko-fi. Link available in the video's description. Now, let's see what this thing would be like as a real living animal. Today, we meet a creature that needs no introduction, beloved all over the world for its charismatic nature, Electromus streptoprosopon, the Homer Chew. While the position of the face of a Homer Chew seems to defy logic, it is in fact a great adaptation to its particular lifestyle. The head of these rodents is greatly elongated, almost as long as the rest of its body, and turns backwards on a series of very flexible vertebrae, placing its face on its lower body. As this creature forages for food, its face stays as close to the ground as possible, scanning for any piece of edible matter it may find. While it retains the whiskers common to other species of mammal, these have moved to the upper side of the head, thus retaining their position at the frontmost part of the body. These whiskers are very sensitive and, aided by the creature's hearing, will give the homer chew very detailed information about its environment in place of its sight, which is now fully involved in the search for food. The muscular structures at the sides of its face anchor it in place to the muscles of its stomach thus leaving the face in a stable position as it walks. Whether the Homer Chew searches for food on the ground or along the branches of trees, its face will remain hidden, protected from sudden attacks by predators. Should any predator try to attack it from the back, however, it will be greeted by a sudden jolt. You see, the tail and back of these creatures are filled with dense, very dry fur. The Homer Chew will regularly groom this fur, rubbing each hair against the others in order to generate small amounts of static electricity. While the charge these rodents are capable of storing in their fur is quite small compared to that of other close relatives, it is still enough to give potential predators second thoughts about their choice of prey. While these discharges are a good deterrent, the best strategy is simply not being targeted at all. Homer Chew will achieve this thanks to their pale coloration and striped pattern, which helps them camouflage among the vegetation. Fascinatingly, this creature's name comes from a very well-known person. Yes, I am talking about Greek poet Homer, who famously blinded himself after seeing the visage of one of these rodents, which had been imported from its natural habitat as a curiosity. In modern times, Homer Chew have been sold all over the world as pets, due to their... appealing looks, apparently. Okay, I guess. Anyhow, their high reproductive rates have quickly turned them into pests in most places of the world, and urban Homer Chew are threatened by the near-omnipresence of junk food. While the extremely unrefined palate of a Homer Chew helps it survive in the wild, in urban environments it leads them to overeating very nutrient-poor food, leading to an obesity epidemic among these noble yet misunderstood creatures. And that's it for a speculative biology look into Homer Chew. I knew I wanted to do something special for April Fools, and while I considered a couple of options, many of them placed in the comments by you guys, the sheer absurdity of this one was what convinced me to give it the spot for this day. Plus, there was the fact that it meant I could use the Pikachu tease for this video. 
I kinda feel bad about it now. Not a lot though. While this creature is clearly done for fun, I still wanted to give it the full speculative biology treatment as to any other creature, which, at least for me, made the end result all the more funny. By the way, yes, I will be making actual speculative biology Pikachu in a later video, as well as many other creatures from the comments. So remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, happy April Fools, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.